good morning students today we are going to start a new chapter that is current electricity what is meant by electric current we have already studied in chapter 10 electric current is the rate of flow of electric charges so how much faster the charge particle is moving or how much charge is moving per unit time that is called electric current so electric current is defined as the charge flowing through any section of the conductor in one second so we can say i is equal to q by t if the charge flow is steady that means if the charge is flowing constantly per unit time then we can simply say i is equal to q by t but imagine if the charge is varying the charge flow varies with time then we can take i is equal to dq by dt and what is the si unit of current si unit of current is ampere and uh, 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb by 1 second so here i am just showing the graphs of different types of current the first one which i have drawn in the blue color that is steady current which we call it as direct current dc one which i have drawn with red color this one that is ac alternating current the current which varies in magnitude continuously and the direction changes periodically so this is the positive direction and this is the negative direction then a varying current whose magnitude varies with time so i have drawn that with the green one so like that there are different types of current conventionally the direction of current means it is the direction of flow of electric charges that means positive charge so conventional current the direction is the direction of motion of positive charges and later only it is seen that electric uh, current is caused by the movement of electrons so uh, finally we uh, told like this the direction of current is always from positive to negative that means high potential to low potential whereas the direction of electrons the movement of electrons will be from negative potential to positive potential that means lower potential to higher potential so you can see in the figure electric charges are moving from higher potential to lower potential that is the direction of current and electrons are always moving from higher uh, lower potential to higher potential so the direction of motion of electrons is opposite to the direction of flow of current okay now electric current is actually the motion of electrons movement of electrons these electrons are in random motion in a conductor when electric field is not applied but when we apply an electric field the electrons will start moving opposite to the direction of electric field so when no electric field is given the motion was random so that the average velocity is zero when the electric field is given then what will happen then electrons will start moving opposite to the direction of the electric field electrons move opposite to the direction of electric field the velocity with which the electron drift opposite to the direction of electric field <laughs> is called drift velocity so the free electrons are get drifted towards the positive terminal under the effect of the applied electric field so why i call the motion of electrons as drifting because electrons are not moving in a straight line even when an electric field is applied electrons are not moving in a straight line for example suppose imagine this is a conductor 
a conducting wire will be always cylindrical shape. Imagine an electron. When the electric field is given, the electron will move. Electron moves in this direction. Or uh, electron moves in this direction. But there are other electrons in the conductor. So, this electron will collide with the another electron. So, after collision, the direction can change. Again, it travels in a straight line until it collides with the another electron. Then the direction will change again. Like that, after each collision, the path of the electron can change. It can be any random path. That is why I am not, I am not putting any particular path. I am just taking a path as I wish. So, you can see the motion is random and you see the length, the length of the path is also different. So, actually finally you can see the electron is reaching from this end to that end. But during its motion, the entire motion of the electron is random. So, since the motion is not continuous, we will say this as drifting, electron is just drifting from here to here. Then after the collision, it is drifting from here to this side. Then again another collision, it drifted towards the other side. So, that velocity is called drift velocity. So, the drifting of electron happens due to the collision of electrons with the neighboring electrons or neighboring metal ions. Now, you can see the length of the paths is different. The time interval between two collisions. You will take this time as T1, this as T2, this time as T3, so on. The average time interval between the successive collision is called relaxation time. So, the average, the average time interval between two successive collisions is called relaxation time. So, I can relate drift velocity with the electric field. relation between drift velocity and electric field or they can ask a relation between drift velocity and relaxation time. So, I told you after each collision the electron stops momentarily for some time and then accelerates from rest. That is why we call this as drifting. Electron will hit, stops momentarily here and again it will take a fresh start. So, uh, you can write under the heading you can write after each collision the electron stops momentarily and accelerates from rest. So, u is equal to 0. Time is now I take as tau where tau is the relaxation time. Tau is the relaxation time. f is equal to m a. So, a is equal to f by m and you know what is electric force? Electric force in first chapter we studied electric force as E into Q, electric field into charge and the charge of electron is what? Small letter E, we can denote it as small letter E. Therefore, E E by M. Now, I am going to uh, derive drift velocity. V is equal to U plus A T. This is what you know. U is 0. So, V D is equal to 0 plus what is A? E E by M. And T is tau. So, you will get the equation as Vd is equal to 
capital E small e tau by m. This is the equation for the drift velocity. Okay. Now, velocity is a vector quantity. You can take down the notes. Just write this derivation and uh, see. Velocity is a vector quantity. So, if I write uh, drift velocity in vector form, I can write V d is equal to vector V d is equal to minus vector capital E small e tau by m. Here you can see I have put a negative sign when I consider the vector. Negative sign is put because electrons move opposite to the direction of the electric field. Electrons move opposite to the direction of electric field. That is why a negative sign is put. Now, what is current density? Current density at a point is the current through unit area of the conductor. We studied current I is equal to Q by T, rate of flow of charge. Current density, current density means current by area. So, I can write like this, current density is denoted by J and J is equal to capital I by A, I is current, current by area. Or in vector form, I can write I is equal to vector J dot vector A. And uh, we have to study one derivation which is regarding uh, electric current in terms of drift velocity. So, that derivation we will do it in the next video, but for the time being just look at this equation I is equal to N E A V D. This is the relation connecting current and drift velocity. The derivation we, we can do it in the next section. So, what I am saying is I is equal to N E A V D. Now, drift velocity is I by A. So, if I take this equation this equation divide by a. So, a will be cancelled. You will be getting n e v d. That is what I have written here. n e v d. Okay. Now, just see what is Ohm's law. We have already studied it in 10th standard, but still it is like a revision. Ohm's law tells that the potential difference across any ends of a conductor is directly proportional to the current or we will say the current flowing through the conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference provided at its terminals provided temperature remains same. So, for Ohm's law to be satisfied or Ohm's law to be obeyed the temperature should remain constant. So, I will write V proportional to I or V is equal to R into I that R is the constant called resistance. So, if I draw the graph connecting V and I you will be getting a straight line. Okay. So, that is the um, graph. So, any conductor which obey Ohm's law will have a straight line graph. So, this graph is I V graph I is in the y axis and uh, uh, v is along the x axis. So, from here, so this graph is called V i graph. If I take the slope of this, we will get 1 by resistance, reciprocal of the resistance. Now, if I put i along the x axis and v along the y axis, still we will be getting a straight line, but then slope of the graph gives resistance. Okay, so, there are two aspects when V is along the x axis and I along the y axis then slope of the straight line graph gives reciprocal of resistance. But if V is along the y axis and I is along the x axis then slope of the graph gives resistance. So, uh, that is enough for today. Uh, in the next video we will be dealing with the current relationship between current and uh, drift velocity. Okay. Thank you.